Happy holiday, everyone. Yeah, no fooling around on this segment. Right off the bat, I have triggered right-wingers, religious right-wingers. This is an annual debate. There are Christians out there who insist people say Merry Christmas. And here's what I have to say to that. I'm retired. Don't ask me to do anything. Of course, my retirement is temporary. Eventually, I will be back in the workplace. I've worked in places where the boss wanted you to say Happy Holiday. I've worked in places where the boss wanted you to say Merry Christmas. And I've worked in places where the boss just didn't give a rat's ass. I've learned from experience to just say the same thing I say the rest of the year. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. See you again. And I wait for the customer to say Merry Christmas or Happy Holiday or whatever. You know, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever. And then I respond in kind. That's the safest way. But I will give Christians credit. At least you're not going to cut my head off if I say Happy Holiday. You'll just yell at me. It's Christmas. Why can't you say Merry Christmas? It's the day Jesus was born. And I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm not going to open the Bible and read the passages and explain why Jesus was likely born between May and July, because that has been covered a million times by myself and a million others. Christmas means different things to different people, and some couldn't care one way or another. And me, I'm at the point where I just don't care one way or another, because these holidays are for the family. They are family holidays. My relatives are either dead or living in another state. I have one cousin I still keep in touch with living here in California, another in Texas, others I haven't heard from in years. And when you're dealing with a 91-year-old mother with dementia and zero mobility, it's kind of hard to get into the spirit of the holiday in any way, shape, or form. I do, for my mother, have a small artificial Christmas tree sitting at the foot of her hospital bed, which all sits in the middle of my living room. I have a four-foot Santa statue and a Mrs. Claus statue that plug in and actually move around, but I don't dare set them up because my mother would freak out. She freaks out at times watching television, thinking the people on TV are actually in the house. I can only imagine the hysteria those two statues would cause. So they sit in my closet taking up space. But I'm always amused by this mythical war on Christmas. In the eyes of some Christians, I am the mythical enemy because I say Happy Holiday rather than Merry Christmas. And people love laying this on the door of political correctness. And as much as I despise political correctness, this has been going on for a long, long time. It has nothing to do with political correctness. If you're going to lay blame on anybody, blame Irving Berlin, who wrote the song Happy Holidays in 1942, and blame Bing Crosby for singing it. I do believe it was part of the soundtrack to the movie Holiday Inn, starring Bing Crosby. I think that was the same movie he sang White Christmas, a song a few years ago people complained was racist. And all this time, I thought it was about people having a desire to see it snow for Christmas. As far as I'm concerned, you can keep the snow. I live out here in crazy California. We're a couple of weeks from Christmas, and it's about 78 degrees outside. That's one of the reasons I moved out here, the lack of snow. Oh yeah, snow is fun when you're young and don't have a care in the world. Not so much fun when you spend half the morning shoveling out your driveway to get the car out to go to work. And driving in the snow is not fun either. No, the fun and novelty wears off real quick when it comes to snow. I don't like snow. And there are people out here in California who, like me, came out here to California to get away from the snow, but would like just for one day for it to snow and that day be Christmas. And I say to them, you could always go up to the mountains. It snows up in the mountains. That's the attraction to California. 
There's not too many places where you can go skiing in the morning and hang out on the beach in the afternoon. But there are some people who this time of the year miss the snow and would like that white snowy Christmas that Bing Crosby sang about. The funny thing is, a lot of them are the same people who get in my face about saying Happy Holiday. It's Christmas. Why can't you say Merry Christmas? It's about the birth of Jesus. Then what difference does it make whether there's snow on the ground and it's 14 degrees or the sun is shining down on your empty head and it's 100 degrees? Make up your mind. Is it about the weather or the baby Jesus? But hey, I'll take the Christians and all their hypocrisy and goofiness over the Muslims any day of the week. Compared to that religion, you Christians are a duck walk. And just for the hell of it, let's end this segment with a poem. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snugged in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash to open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all, as dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes were twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eyes and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.